Hi, we're at the Paris Air Show with Archer Aviation, one of the front runners trying to bring Evitol aircraft into commercial service fairly soon. We're going to be catching up with the CEO of Archer, Adam Goldstein, and he's going to update us on where this is progressing. During the Paris Air Show in June, I spent time with Archer's founder and CEO, Adam Goldstein. He spoke about how the California-based company plans to use the United Arab Emirates as a launch pad. And barely two weeks later, on the 2nd of July, the company flew the midnight aircraft for the first time in Abu Dhabi. So, Adam, you are bringing the midnight aircraft to market. That's your mission. You've been totally focused on it for several years now. Where are you at this point? We're halfway through 2025. Where does this stand? So there's several categories to that question. On the engineering front, the aircraft has been under development for many years, and we're deep into the testing phase. So we just started our piloted flight campaign, which is where we're showing all the things the aircraft can do at a point where it's reached um, you know, a safety level and a confidence level from the team that we can start flying humans. So that's a really exciting part of, uh, of the campaign. On the regulatory side, we are deep along the process certifying the aircraft in the US with the FAA. And that has been um, you know, a long road that the industry has worked on, setting up all the rules, going through all the testing, and working our way through that, that part of the process. On the manufacturing side, we stood up our plant in Georgia, uh, opened it last year. And so that is a high-scale aircraft manufacturing plant that can build you know, a lot of aircraft and uh, upwards of 650 aircraft per year just in its first phase. And so we're putting all those things together now, and the goal is to launch um, in the UAE um, this year, where we can start to show what these aircraft can do and really introduce them to the world. Excellent. Well, let's stay in the UAE. Um, why are you taking this approach? Why go so far from California where you're based and, and set up what I guess is a trial operation, but you described it for me. What's the, what's the theory there behind this exercise? Yeah, so the UAE has been very leaned in for a long time on the industry. And they want to see aviation advance kind of like everybody else does. But what they've done is they've really taken a position where they've said, okay, we want the UAE to be an early market that can open up and really showcase what these aircraft can do. It'll be you know, a minimal operation where there's a handful of aircraft that we're showing them fly. We're showing really the community engagement here of what these aircraft can do and introducing them to the world. So the UAE has also been an investor in the industry. And so we're partnered with Mubadla, who's been an investor, IHC, another one of the sovereign funds that's been an investor. And so they've really helped push this journey along. Um, and, a, and sort of the you know, reward here is that the world will get to see these aircraft fly, you know, hopefully as soon as this year. Right, so what is it that the, the authorities, the GCAA in the UAE is going to permit? Is it going to permit piloted flights, but I guess not with commercial passengers on board? Yeah, the goal is to put um, you know, as much advancement you know, behind the industry as possible. So the first phase of this is Archer bringing an aircraft there. We'll start to fly the aircraft. First we'll do it autonomously, and then we'll start to do it piloted, and that will happen you know, later this summer. And then the goal is, as we prove out all the safety cases, is to start uh, eventually putting uh, the commercial passengers in there as well. Right. And what role will your local partners there, I guess? have, I guess that you've got people helping you with Vertiports, uh, do you have a customer there yet? Yeah, there is a whole network that's come together in the UAE to help launch this. So we have a um, whole ecosystem in Abu Dhabi that we've set up to help launch the product, including Abu Dhabi Aviation, which is a large operator of rotorcraft, I think the largest in the Middle East, um, who is the customer who is buying aircraft and ultimately, you know, will be using them. We have Vertiport partners who are building, electrifying, uh, hybridizing existing infrastructure, building new infrastructure to help build the ecosystem there. Um, there's pilot training, there's maintenance, and so the whole ecosystem locally has come together you know, to launch this. Right, and then back in California, how many aircraft do you now have flying? I mean, are you using multiple prototypes for this? Yeah, so we just started the, the pilot test campaign with our first aircraft. There are several aircraft that are about to come off the line as well. Um, and then, of course, we have the aircraft we've been flying um, you know, historically. So we're really building up that fleet, and the goal is to get a lot of test hours behind the aircraft, prove the safety capabilities, and then ultimately roll it out. Right. And then I, I believe you're also resolved over and above the standard EVATOL model to offer a conventional takeoff and landing model. I think that's connected with work with the military. What, what's the rationale behind that? It's a safety case. And so what we've tried to do is find the safest way to produce these aircraft and operate these aircraft. 
And so by having a CTOL capability, it allows us to um, you know, operate um, even in extreme conditions of failure where you can you know, fly the plane, glide the plane for quite a long time in order to find a, a proper place to land. Um, it also helps from a, an energy perspective if there are certain use cases where you want um, increased range capabilities, you can take off or land conventionally, which of course would uh, dramatically save some batteries. Mm -hmm. Interesting. You started all this, I think, 2022, perhaps even earlier than 2018. that. 2018. That's right, it's, it's been a long time. Has this been more complicated than you thought over time? <laughs> Silly question, um, really. <laughs> it has been a journey, let's put it that way. Uh, it's not just about the engineering. The engineering is something that like, a lot of people talk about, but we're trying to help create an industry, and that really does take a village, and so it's not just Archer that's doing that. You have incredible support um, from all the global governments. I think the FAA has been very supportive in helping to create the rules and the frameworks around this. The pilot communities have been great coming in and helping you know, really increase the awareness and helping showcase what these aircraft can do and the safety case of these aircraft. You've had the investment community come around and help to fund this early industry. And I think that's really important because aviation you know, has not advanced as much as a lot of the other industries have. And so we've seen great advancements in, uh, in cars and great advancements in, in, you know, in computers and software. And it's aviation's time now to help usher this in. But it's just day one. And so this is day one of bringing these aircrafts to market. And I think you're going to see many decades of growth here uh, for these aircraft. And so I'm uh, very bullish on the future of aviation. Final question. President Trump recently issued an executive order that I understand kind of clears a path towards some pilot programs. Do you think that will be significant? How might that help you? I think the biggest reason why it's significant is the White House is saying, this is important. And America wants to take a leading position in aviation and help show that to the, to the regulators and to the world that they care about this. And so that's helped really create a lot of attention and focus on it. And I think you're going to see over time here um, incremental steps that they're taking to help bring these aircraft to market. And that was really just the first big one that was announced. But you're going to see more and more steps announced to help us find these pathways to do it. Obviously, the goal is create things at a very high safety standard, but also make sure we do get them to market because the world is not standing still, the world is moving, and so we have to make sure that we can actually bring these aircraft to market, clear the pathway, and ultimately launch a new sector. Well, if all of this goes to plan, in theory, let's say around this time next year in 2026, you could potentially be one of the first customers for these new Evertol Air Taxi services. <laughs>